Good morning. Good morning. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Magandang mga po. Magandang mga po. Well, today is I Christ the King, a special Sunday. Jesus as King, Jesus as Shepherd. Thank you, Father, for all the blessing, your great love, your great mercy, and for Jesus Christ, the Shepherd, the King. Help us to understand that images. What is the meaning of these images for us today? In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. When I read the scripture for today, I started looking and I started seeing what's going on between a shepherd and a king. That really interesting. Why? It's so both images they are so different. The shepherd essentially is a position of a servant. Is a person who is alone with a flock and taking care of the flock. And no matter what is necessary to do, the church take care of all of them. Right? But it's a servant, it's alone. But also that's really interesting because in the past, in those times, we believe the shepherd is only a work for a man. But if you read the Bible, you can see some experience about some women, they are shepherds. And they are alone with the flock, and they suffer some situations because they need to defend the flock. Right? I know, I know you know, you know your Bible. And we have that uh, different examples in the Bible. Jesus is a wonderful example that no matter what is necessary to do, he is ready to take care of the flock. And of course, we love that part when we, uh, God said, well, we have Jesus Christ, his son, the good shepherd, to die for you and for me, taking care of us. We love that. But we speak the other part when God said, well, but I'm doing my job with justice. I'm going to have to judge among the chips, the fat one and the other one. Oh, that's really interesting. When God is taking care of the sheep, the flock, it's not only to give as everything that what we want. No. It's gave to us everything what we need. Big difference. We are talking about our relationship with God to understand God's will and then ready to follow God's will. In the prayer meeting uh, last Friday they said, well no, how to commit with this God will. Because sometimes we know that God, what is God's will, but we don't follow God's will. We follow our will. That's the fat sheep. We are not obedient. We are not in action. Well, God is ready to judge according to our own actions. But at the same time, He used uh, with the prophecy and Jesus as king. And that's the other part, we love it. Because the king is a ruler, the king is who has a lot of servants, a lot of people who are ready uh, to please the king. Right? And again, it's only a role for a man, no woman. Hmm. Really? Really? And I start thinking about it. Why Ezekiel used this image about the king and how some of the apostles, they used that image? It's easy. In those days, 
they have kings around them. Remember? And it's easy for them to understand what we need to do with Jesus Christ. In other words, it's easy to tell them, you know, we need to follow Jesus Christ as king. And everybody understood. Oh, yes, of course, because if the king said you need to do it, you don't ask. Because maybe you die if you, don't obedient. you are not obedient. Well, everybody get the picture. In other words, they use an image to help them to understand what is the role of Jesus Christ as king, but at the same time as shepherd. Well, what is for us today? What image is going to, have to help us to understand how it's possible to put together both images? And I start thinking. If we want to obey God, if we want to be obedient, definitely we need to know ourselves, right? The only way I can trust in myself is I know my weakness and my good things, my good side and my bad side, and put together in balance. You know, I'm always joking about, hey, nobody's perfect. I'm the only one perfect in this church. If we need somebody perfect. But the real truth, before God, we need to be honest with ourselves and to see the good things and the bad things. To put in perspective and say to the king, save me. But at the same time, turn to the shepherd. Take care of me. That's the only way to understand how it's possible to be Christian if we are doing something against another people. Because according to the lecture today, the scripture in Matthew is if you did that to them, you did to me. Remember? How is possible? And then I just started thinking, oh my God. We love, we love to reject people for any reason. <clears throat> Let me give you an example. We love to reject young people. Why? Because they are so noisy. And their tendency is being obedient. They love to say no. But that's part of their age. We love to reject the elderly. Why? Oh, because they are really stubborn. They love the past. We love to reject another people from other countries because they speak another language. It's another culture. We love to reject, in some cases, women. Why? Because we are the men. We are the leaders. We love to reject the people who are in trouble. Drug addicts, gays, and a long list because they are not perfect. Oh my gosh. When Jesus the King said, you need to love everyone. If you are rejecting one of them, you are rejecting me. I'm here to take care of all of them. Because before God, we are equal in God's name. Amen? Amen. Amen. How is possible then to reject? You know why? Because we believe we are the kings. No, we are not the kings. He is the king. And he decided to be humble. And he decided to be shepherd. And he decided to take care of you and me. But he's ruling with justice. Nobody is rejected. No one. When I saw that, oh my gosh, God is so good. God is so great. Hey, uh, maybe I don't agree with you, but I love you. Maybe we have different point of view, but no matter that, I love you. 
Maybe you want to kill me. That's fine. It's your decision. But I love you. That's my decision. But I never wanted to take the position of the king, of God, to judge, condemn, reject anyone. Of course, I wanted to tell some of them, you know what? You are doing something really wrong. But you are welcome here. I am not supporting your actions. But let me tell you the good news. Jesus is a king, but also Jesus is a shepherd. And if somebody is going to take care of you, and you know who? Me. I'm here in God's name. It's so easy to say we believe in Jesus as king. We believe in Jesus as shepherd. And that's it. But we don't have a commitment with God's will. What we need to do every Sunday, every day, in the mornings, Father, help me to do your will. Help me to not reject anyone. No matter they are not God's people, they are your creation. How is it possible? How is it possible to be in that way, judging and rejecting people? And you know how is it possible that? <laughs> when you are silly. That's the only explanation I have because I remember when I tried to do that. I was there before. King. Jesus is my shepherd. And what I need to do is only to follow his example. And believe me, he decided to die in the cross for you, for me. He died in the cross for me. That's a great love. That's why for me it's impossible to judge and to condemn anyone. Well, only sometimes I have the temptation to condemn my wife. <laughs> That's the only temptation I have. Do you know why? Because sometimes I believe she is my possession. No. No. I don't have nothing in my hands. Nothing. Only God's love, Jesus' salvation, and the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, he is the king. Yes, he is the shepherd. And we are happy because we have that salvation. We experience that great love. And God is with us. And thanks to Jesus, no matter the diversity, we are one in Christ. Amen? Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.